So my name is Carrie Dorsky. I am the NWTC Artisan Center Operations Coordinator. That is a mouthful. Um, this is our last artist journey series of the year. So we do them from September to May, and I like to end with our five residents right before their exhibit, and I will touch on that in a moment. So artist journey is nine months. We cover three artists, three organizations, and three business topics each year. It's virtual on the third Tuesday of every month. It is free. And all of the recordings are on our YouTube channel and on our website. So it is a great resource for things like how to photograph your artwork, how to price your artwork, how to get involved with local organizations, and all that fun stuff. Before I go any further and talk about the residency program, if and when people join live, please unmute, ask questions, jump in. There were some great questions. <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the residency program first, and then I will turn it over to these guys. So um, nwtc.edu slash residency program is our website. It is all up to date, and we are currently taking applications up until June 11th. So it's a little earlier deadline than last year because I need a little bit more time for doing personal interviews. Excited about that. Um, this program is for artists who are starting or growing their business. We meet year-round um, with four mentors, if you include me. So me, Frank Juarez, Kat Gottlieb, and Craig Bauer. And we spend the year talking about different topics and um, covering mindset and goal setting and building a website and building all kinds of things, all the important stuff you need. So it's a great year um, if you're interested in running a business as an artist or if you want to come spend a whole year with me, monthly. <laughs> you can laugh at that. Um, also on that website, nwtc.edu slash residency program, my contact information is on there. So if people read it about the selection process and the application. If you have any questions, you can send those right to me. And then my big plug is that our residency program culminates in, in an exhibit at the end of their year with us at the Art Garage across the street. So the five of them get the front gallery of the Art Garage to showcase all that they've been working on this year. Um, this year's exhibition is June 2nd to July 1st, and the reception is Friday, June 2nd from 5 to 7. Um, it's always a really big fun party, so come see all of us and then do um, art night, art walk in De Pere. Yes, art walk in De Pere that night. Okay, so I am going to kick it over to our residents first. And I'm going to start with Amber, who's in the so. Um, feel free to interrupt each other and have a conversation. We can pretend like we're <laughs> <laughs> um, And so I would love to know your name, maybe your business name, a little bit of history about um, who you are and what you did before you got to this program. So my name is Amber Hendricks. My business is Amber Dawn Art. I always was like creative and painted and did art, all the art classes in high school. And then a few years ago, I ran into Jennifer Frisch, who actually now teaches here, and we became friends, and she told me about the ceramics classes here and told me that I should look into them. So I did, and about two and a half years ago, I took my first ceramics class and completely fell in love with clay. So over this past year, I have narrowed down my creative ADD to the things that I enjoy the most, and that's ceramics and painting, in particular alcohol paintings, because they are my favorite medium. But I don't know, I do art because it keeps me sane, it makes me happy. And I love when I make something that somebody else loves as much as I do. I can't believe that was only two and a half years ago. Right? <laughs> That's crazy it to me. Longer. It does. Like, I feel like feel like you've always been here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Christine, why don't you go next? Uh, my name is Christine Van Sickle. I am an acrylic and mixed media artist. Uh, my business is East Twin Arts. Um, I uh, started out doing graphic design. I went to school, God, it feels like eons ago, and I worked in graphic design for 20 years. Um, got sick of the corporate world and decided to uh, go off on my own and just uh, try to do markets and sell my art. And I'm in my second year of doing that. And um, so far, so good. It's been fun. And um, every day, I'm, I'm learning something new and, and just trying to challenge myself to, to start a new endeavor. 
Two and a half years? Two and a half years. Yeah, yeah about the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, Michelle, why don't you go next? Uh, so my name is Michelle Diedrich. My business is Shell the Painter. Uh, I originally in college triple majored in business, French, and art. I left, I did the corporate thing for a little bit, did the nonprofit thing for a little bit, did the small business thing for a little bit, um, and then finally decided to work myself, be an artist. Um, about two years ago, weirdly enough. <laughs> <laughs> so then last cohort, uh, two of my friends were in the residency program, and I don't believe I would have been um, accepted as a friend if I didn't apply. Um, <laughs> so uh, applied, got in. Um, and I focus a lot, primarily in oil painter. Um, recently I've been exploring a little bit more with fiber arts and some of my skills in the craft and sewing realm and how I can incorporate that into what I do painting wise. Um, I'm trying to think if the two and a half years or two years kind of lines up with the pandemic and I'm like, is there a trend there? Is there something for me? Something to it? Yeah. Well, I had signed up for a ceramics class a year before I took it, and then it got canceled because oh, of the pandemic. I was so bummed. <laughs> I will say, I started here like a month before the world shut down, and so I was in charge of canceling all of those classes. <laughs> it was a nightmare. It was horrible. <laughs> okay, Ms. Carly, I'm going to swing the camera over to you. Your turn. I'm Carly Peterson. My business name is Carly Bird Studio. And I declared that officially in January. So I'm definitely very much a starter of, of a business. Um, it has always been a dream of mine. Um, I just never thought it could happen. So in my whole life, art has been very therapeutic. And um, I just love creating because it brings me back to those awesome times when I was a kid around the kitchen table or painting with grandma, um, just really um, all the feels. And so um, throughout the years, I went to college and, and majored in art education and fiber art. And I have two children. So on and off throughout the years, I stayed home with them while taking a couple of teaching jobs here and there and subbing. And now they're in high school and middle school and I just feel like it's time to sort of re start that fire in me a little bit and this year has truly been about exploring and experimenting and my art educator background has all the likes of all the different studios so trying to find my favorites um, I took a ceramics class here and so you'll see some ceramics pieces yeah, from your first show. class was with me too yes it was my first class <laughs> yes seriously yep. yes and it was so cool. Was that timeline is so wrong in my head. <laughs> I was blown away by the wheel throwing that I didn't have a lot of experience in, and Amber was like fighting it, and no, and I want to hand build it. <laughs> so it was really cool, though. In that class, you can kind of do, he kind of guides you wherever you had keys. Um, he kind of guided us wherever, and the open studio program here was great used my badge access a lot to come and use the studio. It's good for, I was going to mention, so next year's residency will all have a free annual membership and um, those registrations for the public open this Monday coming up and I've had to put a time on it because people are asking like when registration opens. So if anybody's watching this, the five residents next year automatically are in that five seats set aside. <laughs> There's no danger of losing out figured out all those kinks. <laughs> yes. So that's pretty much in a nutshell. A lot of exploring um, in love with ceramics. I also do some fiber art um, and some a lot of watercolor from commission works. But oddly enough, you won't see a lot of that in the show because I've been busy exploring other mediums too. Okay, to your turn. I'm gonna let me swing the camera a little further your direction. There we go. Go for it. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Chu. Um, and my business is Chu Lorsan Art. Um, you can find me at chulorsanart.com. Um, and I graduated from UWGB about two years ago now. 
um, and I got my bachelor's degree in art, uh, studio art specifically. And I primarily focus in oil painting um, and portraits and landscape studies, um, still life. And what got me connected to uh, this program was my professor Keith, and he told me about this program. And I was like, yeah, you know, I would love to, you know, apply and meet other local artists and, you know, just get connected outside of just the uh, college level. Um, so it was really nice to uh, build those relationships with local artists too. So that was really nice. So as you all know, I'm going to zoom out so everybody watching can see all six of us. So fun. It's like a little video game that I get to play. <laughs> here we go. See the whole room. See me way over here. Um, I wrote out a whole bunch of questions, but we don't even have to tackle all of them. Or, you know, if somebody else has a question. Last year, one of the residents posed a question. So I'm going to start with the same question I asked last year because I like a little comparison. Um, and last year at this time, I asked what was the most enjoyable or the, the funnest part of the year. And I know thinking back a long time ago, it's hard. Um, I think one of the most fun things about this program was um, getting like a year worth of events in our calendar. So like we knew you know, where to go and when we did go, it was really fun to run into each other and talk to one another and um, build that relationship with each other. Uh, you know, so that way it's like, oh, it's not so awkward. I don't have to go there alone. You know, it's like you can go and then it's like, oh, I know you. So it was really nice having that connection and um, that familiarity with this program. That was a lot of fun. The hardest part is like showing up alone to a gallery opening. Mm -hmm. And I say that as somebody who has worked in the arts for over 10 years now, and I still am like, I'm walking by myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, be, I agree with that, though, because I've gone to several art events by myself just over the last couple of events. And I mean, I thought we ran into each other at that yeah. one. And I've always just seen people that I recognize from other art shows and festivals and stuff like that. So I don't even think twice about it anymore. I'll yep. just, you know, I don't got nothing to do. I'll just go. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Any other funny or fun, enjoyable moments? I've really enjoyed Kath's talks. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, should, we should tell everybody a little bit about Kat. So Kat is one of the mentors. Um, I met her because she wrote a business of art illustrated book for the Trout Museum for an event they did like four summers ago. And somebody brought it to me and they were like, you have to meet this woman. And so I like, Totally internet stalked her. And I was like, can we please get coffee? I would like to chat with you. And now she's been a part of the program ever since. So she's a very successful artist. She has started art businesses and sold them. And now she is an active illustrator and she makes planners and she licenses her artwork everywhere. I am um, always in awe of the things she has done in her past lives. And now that she's sharing that with us, I think it's really cool. And she really focuses with them on like mindset, goal setting. Um, kind of whole person stuff, not just like write your artist statement, write your business plan, get a bank account, you know, all of those kind of hard skills. She focuses more on the the mindset and how to enjoy what you're doing or get yourself out of a funk. And I think that's one of the best parts. So sorry to interrupt you, but I like to give a little context. Yeah, absolutely. It's helpful. <laughs> yeah, if you think about people who are watching this who are like, who's Kat? <laughs> Um, I believe you said her in the really quick yeah. introduction to the program, yeah. but glossed over him. Yeah, but uh, no, I always consider myself like such a skeptic, but I'm also like very open to the woo-woo stuff and the mindset, and so it's, just, it's been great to hear her talks and to kind of have that floating in my brain. Yeah. I always say too, I'm like. I'm so black and white and I just want to like follow the bullet points and get the things done. And then she hits you with that like last the two weeks ago where we talked about like that that word mountain where like if you're kind of surrounding yourself with these like negative thoughts, if you just like, oh, maybe something a little bit more positive, you can like shift your entire mindset and be like, oh, I don't feel so crappy right now. <laughs> um, and there's moments like that throughout this where I'm like, 
I'm a woo woo girl. I, you know, like, I have to admit it sometimes. I don't like to, but. And then her whole talk about goal setting and manifesting, too, I think is really powerful. And uh, there is concrete data behind setting goals and achieving. We, we love Kat. That's. <laughs> She, uh, for our viewers as well, she was actually just here this evening, uh, right before this. That's why we kicked off right at 5.30 tonight. Um, and she surprised me with this presentation last year. It was a, uh, can I come chat? I have a few more things I want to tell them. And so this year when I was planning to hear, I was like, I need you to do that again. Because it was really powerful. Uh, and so we squeezed it in tonight. So we're just coming off the heels of some cat time, which I probably why we could continue to sing her praises all night. Okay, anything else like fun, enjoyable? I mean, we can, we can think of other things. As this class was fun. Oh, I really enjoyed his class. Say that louder. Frank. <laughs> so Frank he Juarez, yo, yeah. um, let's give some context for him. So he is uh, an art teacher in Sheboygan. He used to run a gallery in Milwaukee. He's kind of the, I would say, business of art guru of the Midwest. And a plug, him and I are putting on the first Business of Art Symposium here, October 14th. Registration will be live and online on June 30th. And the entire schedule, including speakers and bios, are on our website. That one is nwtc.edu slash, um, I think it is Art is Symposium. Don't quote me on that. It's on our homepage. <laughs> um, we're having custom URLs made right now with our webmaster, and I'm trying to remember them all in my head. but. Um, so we are covering that for the public for 100 bucks on a Saturday um, in kind of a brief Midwestern artist who are working kind of way. But what she is talking about is that Frank did a three-day class for all of them last fall. And if you want to talk more about the content, I'm going to make another plug. Um, I just opened registration for this year's class with Frank. We do allow up to 10 people in the public to join that for $150 for three days. So that's awesome. Oh, no, go ahead. Please talk about Frank. <laughs> um, his class is worth it, I would say. It, like Kat in the bringing up things that you don't necessarily think of, he does the same thing, but his is more like the business side of it all, which is awesome because I suck at that. Yep. Horribly. <laughs> so it's it the just, part everybody hates. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know like, where to start. Exactly. He helps with that. And he comes up with things like that you wouldn't think of doing. Like one of them that I took back is if you have your Facebook and your Instagram links and it's the exact same post on both of them eventually start scrolling past you because I already saw that. So they kind of miss out even if you put something different in there. So like change the wording on that. He just had all these fun little tips that were super helpful. I enjoyed his class. And he talks, talks a lot about like professional practice and navigating the fine art world and I think that's important. Um, I haven't talked. I'm going to railroad you guys all night. camera and loose the light, turn me loose. Um, <laughs> One of the, my kind of philosophies for running this program, and I don't want to wax poetic about it all night, is that every artist runs their business differently or approaches how they want to sell their art differently, even at this table, right? There's, you know, maybe gallery, maybe commissions, maybe markets, maybe online. There's so many different ways to do it. And so my philosophy is to put a whole bunch of professionals in front of you guys and take what resonates, take what makes sense for you. Or maybe three years from now, you're like, oh, Frank said this, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's not about like, here's your business plan. If you follow this, you'll be successful. It's more about, you know, what have other people done that makes sense and fits what you want. Like, this worked for me, this didn't work for me. Exactly. And it's also nice to know that people who are successful as artists now also stumble. Oh, absolutely. Things didn't work out for them, and you're like, oh, it's not just me. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Everybody finds their own path, and that's the other thing about when we were kind of developing this program. I was like, there's not one book on this. There's like a thousand books on this or more, and everybody gives different advice, and then the advice changes very quickly mm -hmm. as technology changes, right, as galleries change, all of that. So there's not one right way to run an art business. Anything else before we move on? Because I don't know if you've looked at the next bullet point. <laughs> this is my favorite question, and I put this on everything, is that I, I want everybody to like brag about themselves, and I know it's really hard to do. So um, I would love to hear one thing. If you have more, go for it. But at least one, I'm going to pull it out of you, um, that you accomplished or that you're really proud of this year. 
last year we joked about having a buzzer. I probably should have done that this year for you guys. <laughs> Bring in. Uh, but if somebody would like to go first. I have a website now. Ah, that's I a big one. Before. Pretty proud of it. How did you go about doing that? Well, actually, I have to thank my big brother, Adam. He has a friend who sets up websites. He hooked me up with Adam. Top supporters, and I love them. So he hooked me up with it, and then website up. So hammerdonart.com. Got all my stuff. Yes, I love it. And that's and you mentioned you kind of glossed over it, but networking, right? That's yeah. important. Building those relationships, reaching out to those resources, you know, or making resources by like, hey, do you know somebody who does this? I right. need somebody. <laughs> um, that's really cool. That's a huge accomplishment. <laughs> you should be. Who else has something to brag about? I have something to brag about. Please go for it. <laughs> um, so it hasn't happened yet, um, but I have scheduled my first solo show. Um, it'll be at my alma mater down in Monmouth, Illinois. Uh, August, September, we're still working on dates. Um, I had been working on a collection of artwork, and as I was working on it, I realized I wanted people to experience it in person. And every time I was imagining showing it, it was at the gallery, not at my alma mater. And so I happened to email them and reach out, and they uh, they had already scheduled all of next year's shows, but the person for August, September had dropped out, and so I got that spot. Awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. It's so amazing. exciting. And the fact that you were, like, envisioning it that way. I feel like it's some of Kat's manifestation. Sure, you see that happen. <laughs> yeah. Also, a solo show is a big deal. Yeah. It's a lot to think about, a lot of pressure, a lot of organizing. Yes, I just got the measurements for the gallery last week, so I'm going to start my crazy planning next week. I want to Kat's little talk tonight probably also helped a little bit. With Absolutely, it was super helpful. Great, who hasn't bragged yet? Well, please do. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Typically, I work super slow, and I'm really afraid to step out and be like, I'm doing this because I'm afraid of people looking at me and not liking my stuff or me. Um, so, just a shout out to anyone else who feels that way. This has been wonderful. And so, just creating my official business and sharing that in January felt like this is real, this is happening, but it also kind of put some fire under my butt a little bit to like keep going and not just say I can keep this a secret as an It's hard to say, look at me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and all those nuts and bolts things are not my favorite. Um, I'll do them. <laughs> you that's so nicely. And do them. I'm over here like, that stuff sucks. That stuff is hard. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to do it. <laughs> but we have to. Yes. So there's been a lot of taking care of the nuts and bolts for me this year, too. Um, kind of in the cracks where I was finding it difficult to create work. I think I was just putting so much pressure on myself and not feeling creative. So then I was kind of checking boxes. <laughs> okay. my banking account, make my business. Um, so just checking off some of that stuff. And I usually not engage in social media, but I've been having some fun with Instagram <laughs> and a little bit of a reappearance on Facebook after probably 15 or 14 years. So I <laughs> um, You made me think of something that I have not mentioned yet. I feel like if I don't put the camera on you while I'm talking, you're like talking. Like floating in the air. <laughs> I'll bring the camera back to my face. Um, we also have Lisa Taylor join us from um, the Center for Entrepreneurship at NWTC. She's a newer employee, but she has been invaluable and she does a great little presentation. She did it with my art, this artist journey series in the fall. Um, and she covers those notes and bolts really well. Of like, go to this website, fill out this form, pay this fee. <laughs> step by step, she talks about the business banking part and the insurance part. And it's very black and white. Honestly, it made it really easy for me. Uh, I have never been inclined to start my own business. I prefer to stay behind the scenes. Um, but I've decided this year that I am going to also walk the walk a little bit and do that and say, hey, look at me. Um, <laughs> You think I'd be better at that, and I'm really not. Um, so I feel like Lisa Taylor has been also invaluable in um, 
she works with some of our other students here too. So she's been a great resource that the college added and I'm very thankful for her support, especially when we have like hard questions, like weird questions. Yes. She's, she's helpful at navigating those kind of state systems. Yeah. After she presented, and I thought it was very clear for someone who does not have a background in any of that stuff, she made it simple. Um, and I still needed her to hold my hand a little bit. <laughs> so, so I did have a have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with her and she was super helpful uh, about walking through things and answering any questions. So it's just nice to feel supported um, wherever you are. Where I mean, some of us, like, I guess, just me. So sorry, you went through all that and setting up and getting your permits and you know, yeah, all that. All the stuff you didn't really know. I didn't know I needed all of it. So Same. it's yeah. nice to feel. It's nice to kind of get it done too, because once you do it, it's done. Yes. Yeah. You know, and you're like, okay, cool. Now I can do what I want to do. <laughs> Also, Lisa is very supportive. She came to the art market we had last week on campus, and she's just, you know, she checks in, and she's just a big supporter of our program. So, big shout out to her. Okay, who hasn't bragged yet? Okay. I ask that as if I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess for me, uh, my biggest accomplishment is this, this exhibition coming up. I have yet to do a full cohesive set for a show, um, so I pushed myself and forced myself to do a nine-piece exhibit. Um, and I also taught myself how to do framing. So I built nine frames and I still have to do some assembly with the mixed media part of that, but uh, so far so good. So I'm, I'm pretty shocked that I actually figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> I also, yeah. we can pause on Christine for a little bit longer. I am so impressed at your like market schedule and your preparedness for that and your organization and the way you are planning it out and thinking about it and your booth layout. And um, I feel like Christine is a pro at market. So, uh, <laughs> this is my second year doing it. And I'll tell you what, that first year, you know, I did a lot of the smaller town shows and you just learn so much. And other artists like that are way more experienced are, are so willing to talk to you and give you tips and you know, they, they like to find out what's wrong with their food, but you just gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta get a little thick skin and, and take it and, and fix it for next time. But uh, I've learned so much and I got into my biggest show ever this year. I'll be in Madison's Art Fair off the square. Um, what are the dates? Do you know? I'm that is you. July 8th through the 10th, 8th and 9th, something yeah, there's like that. a lot that. around the court board outside. Yeah, so yeah. so I, I have shows. I'm traveling all over the state this year. I've got shows every weekend in July. I have two weekends off in June, and then I'm pretty much every weekend until September. And I'm just starting to plan my September schedule. So my hope is that next year I can go a little bit out west. My sister lives in Colorado, so I'm kind of hoping to stay out there for a month and get down the road a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. So I will, I will brag on Christina a little bit too. I think she does a great job of varying her price points to really reach multiple audience members. And I, um, Think that's the way to be successful at market is you have to like you know i do i have a seven dollar bookmark that covers pretty much it's kind of weird every time i do a show whatever you pay for that booth fee and jury fee that seven dollar bookmark i'll sell just enough to cover those fees it's so bizarre it's, it's, that's how it seems to work out every time um, but i have that and then i have you know prints varying from 25 to you know, probably eighty dollars, and then you know, the art even starts original art. I will do small pieces for forty. You know, one of the big ones from to like a thousand. So you know, I, I try to cover them all. It's always something for some everybody. Okay, we have one more break left down at the end there. <laughs> um, so there were actually a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> since starting this program, the theme was exploring, experimenting, and emerging. And so for me, I was really trying to um, explore some of my personal artistic abilities with uh, like brush strokes, colors, uh, conceptual themes, designs. Um, and I just felt like after college, I was really stuck. And so this program really helped me with the connection and talking to a bunch of other local artists, um, and so that was, so just the networking itself was one, checked off. So I was like, that's awesome. Um, and then the next was, you know, just really focusing on, you know, my exploration and who I am as an artist. 
Especially after college. That's, yeah. that's a hard time period. Yeah, and so that was checked off, and I was like, you know, I feel like I'm starting to let loose because before I felt really rigid. I felt really like, you know, I had to do this a specific way. But now through this process, it's really helped me loosen up a little bit, be a little bit more creative in ways that I wouldn't necessarily be. So that was a third check off of, you know, you know what I've accomplished. And then a personal and um, a not personal um, accomplishment was uh, during the new year, uh, new year's resolution, I told myself was, I'm going to sell at least one painting this year. And already I've sold five paintings. So, that's a big accomplishment yeah so i was like oh my gosh i was not expecting that and it was all through connection it was word of mouth it was you know just slowly talking about who i am as a business and who i am as an artist and you know what i believe my artist philosophy and then you know one painting after another and then started selling and now I still have a couple of other commissions I'm working on but that's on hold because of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you have to juggle those priorities right? Right. <laughs> right. So. When you're your own boss I think that's Kat kind of covers that too in the beginning about like how to, how to manage your 24 hours in your day and <laughs> <laughs> holding yourself accountable and like Oh yeah, I did waste some time doing nothing. That yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good for you too so. <laughs> Okay, any other, any other breaks, any other accomplishments or challenges, big triumphs? So I used to make jewelry and that was my top seller at all my things. So yeah. I would keep making it, keep bringing it, because that was, I now sell enough mugs that I'm not making jewelry anymore. Oh, I so love I yes. about that. That's really nice actually, yeah, to be I able to like nice. really focus on the part that you love. Agreed. Yeah. Um, how many mugs do you think you sold on Wednesday? Oh, so, so. A whole tote full of mugs. Um, and the funniest part for me is that people reach out to me after these markets. We hold on the main camp. I bought this mug from this artist last market, and now I need more. And like, I'm like, send me a picture. I can tell you who did it. You know. <laughs> but you have like collectors who I keep do. coming my back. Muggles, I'm like, my muggles. It's so cute. I was like, it's true. Okay. Any, any other last minute triumphs? We can come back if you think of something. <laughs> okay, my next bullet point says um, something you learned or an aha moment or something that is like invaluable advice that you are implementing or have implemented or something that you're like, oh, I learned that today and I'm going to run. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, as I was like starting to think about, you know, selling my work, I'm like, okay, this is great. My first one. And then I was like, oh shoot, like everything that I've learned from this course is now like a reality. So then I was <laughs> like, okay, and I have to look back at all my notes. I have to look back and review everything. And a mistake that I did was pricing and the pricing error that I had, I had to backtrack and tell the customer, you know, I'm really sorry, this is my mistake, um, and had to explain all of that, swallow my pride. It was embarrassing, but that's that was a really, yeah, yeah it was a really Huge learning. big, big, big learning point. And I was like, okay, Jude, you can't be pulling all lighters painting again, because that's where <laughs> you make the mistake. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so that was a really big for me. Um, one for me, uh, I always just a little surprise to the like, like stuff we've talked about. And this year, the surprise for me when she talked about how to set up her studio, that was like a surprise handout she showed up with and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I have a small studio space at home and so even just like thinking about layout, organization, and yeah. workflow. It's me happy where the window is. <laughs> I was like, this is a brilliant topic to discuss because they seem to struggle your kid and working. It should feel good. It should help you be productive. Exactly. You should feel like you're like working in a puppy. Um, all around me. That's what mine's like. I'm like working here and everything else is like stacked up all around me. It doesn't and make it easier, yeah, does it? Don't look. I know. <laughs> so I thought it was like it's such a brilliant topic for her to bring forward as something I hadn't even considered. And she showed up with that. 
<laughs> I loved that too, and I think it was right before Thanksgiving break. And so she sent us a challenge to even up your space a little bit, make it really efficient, well functioning. Um, and so I did take a little bit of time and build some shelves for my big paper and um, just rearrange some things. And I found a small space is just fine. I don't need a bigger space. I just need to organize it in a way that makes sense for how I work. Uh, it's been changed. Like, I think I have an extra table now, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if there are any other like big spark moments. Um, I think when Craig comes to chat about marketing and websites, his take is really interesting. And, um, forgive me, I cohorts. We're on the third one now. I'm not going to happen to me. But I know the first year I brought him in, which was last year, he sat down with the last table of residents and he said, I looked you all up by your email addresses and I couldn't find your business. I thought, hey, Craig, you just like started off like right from the jugular. <laughs> and I thought, that was really smart of him because the only way he had your email address is because I had put him on the calendar request. And not you guys, I'm sorry, the previous cohort. Um, but he took their email addresses in that line and he searched for all of them and none of them had been tied to their website. And so that was the way he like introduced himself and was like, You're such a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> he really did. But I think it was really eye opening to them that like from the way you dress and the way you present yourself to the way your email address is laid out, whether it's your first name or your last name or your business name, to you know, everything you do and even bagging. The way you talk is all part of your brand, especially as an artist, it's really ingrained in you. And I think that's a, an important takeaway that the way you show up in the world also affects how you run your business. That's a big one. That was big for me, um, his talks. And I think I had already been thinking so much along those lines. Um, but then this year I did uh, a branding photo shoot with one of my friends who. She's a phenomenal photographer. And so when I sent her like, here's what we're going for. She was so easy to work with and knocked it out of the park in terms of all of these photos are just perfect for my brand. And then I redid my website afterwards. And then I was like hinting at it on social media and like showing my progress on Instagram stories. Uh, and it was cool to have Craig watching along as I did it. And then, you know, there were certain parts where I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a joke on my contact page because it's an otherwise boring page. Why not make a joke? Oh, some personality. And Craig was like, yeah, absolutely. You got to do that. I think he is one of the best at the, like treading the line between like professional with a little bit of snark, with a little bit of humor. He does that so well. And it's like, thank you. Because if I have to see another boring Facebook post. <laughs> but, you know, his posts always make me laugh. And I think that um, you should plug him a little bit. It's designthatrocks.com. Um, and he is um, going to be at the Business Bar Symposium on October 14th. If you want to interact with him, I um, think very highly of him. Okay, any other aha moments we should mention? We've got about 15, 20 minutes left. I'm going to throw a wrench in those bullet points if we don't have any right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I rewatched last year's. Um, just for fun. It was. It was weird to like see myself a year ago in the same exact chair talking to a different side. <laughs> um, I hate to watch myself on camera. I think that's a common experience. Um, so oftentimes I have to like, oh God, cringe. You can't. Um, I know. <laughs> like, don't look at my face. <laughs> that's, that's, like, uh, that's terrible. But you know, it's part of what we do as professionals. Um, but somebody last year asked a question in the chat that said, um, as an artist, what is your biggest challenge? And this person gave three options. You can go outside these options, but I'm going to pose the three options because I think it's interesting. Pricing, choosing what you make, or marketing and selling your work. Pricing. My least favorite part about anything is what I love doing is coming up with price. It's hard to say, pay this to me to have this yeah. object. Usually what I do is I look at something and I think, okay, what would I pay for that? If that was something that I really, really wanted, what would I pay for? And that's usually the price it gets. Sometimes it's, we oh, really, really, really like this, so it's really, really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of artists do that. Zero rhyme and reason to how I price things. <laughs> I had one person come up to me at a show once, and 
with a mug and she goes, do you know you have two different prices on here? I was like, nope, but that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what I put on things as the sticker falls off, I make up a new number. <laughs> and I mean, recognizing that too is like, it's not something enjoyable for artists. To value their work can be very, very difficult. And, you know, especially when it's like something that you speaking from my own experience, something that I'm like just doing for myself is something that I enjoy. And then I'm like, somebody wants to buy it. And I'm like, oh, you want to put a number on that? And I, <laughs> I work on it for like six months, you know, like, yeah. there's not a dollar figure in the world that really makes sense <laughs> to compensate my time. But that's a tough one. I use like a, a formula and then just, you know, if, if the time is way more than normal, I'll reconfigure things. If it's extra materials, if it's, you know, one of my 3D mixed media framing things that I'm doing now, I mean, that that all has to be factored in too. So Absolutely. it's very variable. I mean, you can really, you don't have to stick to something um, concrete all the time. You know, you can definitely... One thing for me, yep. Yeah, one thing for me to add on with what Christine said too is like all of that. And then a variable that I think about is uh, like the American average dollar income per hour in the United States, which is about $15 an hour just to make minimum wage. So then I factor that into my hourly logs of my active work of my paintings. And then by the time I'm done, then I total it all up, multiply that by the price that I would quote. And then that's how I would get like the base price. Um, and then I also go through this formula with, so. I'm an oil painter, so I feel like that's a little bit more concrete to measure. Um, so then I also do a base price on um, the size of the canvas, and then also uh, like it, I, I charge like three cents per square inch of the canvas. So depending on the size that my clients would want, then I would do you know that size, the surface area times three cents would get that, and then. I also factor in materials, cost, and you know, concept. What is this going to look like? Are you know, do they have a clear idea of what they want, or do they want me to do all of the homework for them? So that's also something that I would take into consideration with how I price it. Um, There's a couple other things I would mention is like maybe not for you so much, but some artists who do custom work, like rounds of revisions, and are those built into the cross, or do right. they, are they extra fees? Or I had one of our instructors did an artist journey with me in the pandemic, and we talked all about her pricing formula. And she even factors in specialty training and education, you know, because as a professional, you need to continue to learn and grow and develop, right? And we expect that as professionals in the business world. And, in higher education where I work, it is common to put in professional development. So as artists, concept I hadn't considered, she was like, I factored that in. As well you should, so specialty training, right? Yeah. Your education means that you shouldn't make. Right. It's tough, pricing is hard. It's hard. And everybody does it different. Yeah. There's no one like, here's the formula, Amber, plug your numbers in and you're good to go. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Yeah. And then you consider also, like, especially if you take your show on the road outside of the Midwest mm -hmm. and you think about cost of living and what that looks like. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Oh. Do you all agree on pricing or did you choose any of the other one? Choosing what to make or marketing and selling? Oh. Or are there other, any like huge challenges? For me, I feel like it's more marketing. I, in my mind, pricing, I, being a painter, I have kind of my calculation yeah. set in my mind of price per square inch and then I slide it a little bit depending on size and then I factor in other things like I've got a couple new techniques that I'm working on that take longer or incorporate other things like yeah, let's slide that price per square inch up a little bit uh, but for me I feel like the marketing part of it I feel like I sometimes have a hard time share like sharing things I was gonna say, I feel like I'm going to know that because we all look at you from the outside of like, oh my gosh, she's yeah. really killing it. She's the best at this. Right. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I feel like sometimes I have a hard time being like, I'm really good at what I do. Yeah. And yet I have, I have like two friends that I, I'm like, I can just 
break. I'll, I'll like send them in progress stuff and I'm like, look at this amazing thing I'm doing. I'm so good at this. I'm like, share that out on social yes, media. You should. But I feel weird bragging about it because it feels like bragging. We all do. So I don't know. I don't know if like you all felt this or like have ever felt this, but one of my biggest issues this year was like feeling imposter syndrome, and I was just like, oh my gosh, like what am I doing? Because there was just so many paintings that I produced that were like not so great, or like I didn't really see value in them, and then it's like, do I know what I'm doing? So I think that was like also another really big challenge. Was like, okay, like. So many people can only believe me, but then I have to believe myself enough. And so digging myself out of that rudder was really. I have days like that too, where I just sit there and I'm like, why am I making all this crap? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm spending all my money on art supplies and spending my entire life sitting down here making all this stuff. For what? Can I tell you that my favorite famous artists are the ones that were like super compelled to just make art in their basements forever and then they were not discovered till they died? Those are my favorite oh, artists. <laughs> I'm like, what drove them to make those weird things? <laughs> That's like absolutely fascinating to me. And I'm like, that compulsion to create. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have that, right? We're all like making things. Mm -hmm. But if you, and it's so funny, I'm going to say this because I said it in last year's. People who don't make things think it's absolutely fascinating. Oh, yeah. And they think you are amazing. Some of the conversations I have with people in my yes. business is just like, uh, they're, they're just amazed. They're like, where do you, uh, yeah. be so interesting you come inside up with your this? head. Yeah. Yeah. I get that all the time. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, no. it's never boring. <laughs> and like to it's us, boring, it feels but, normal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll just want to paint that bird tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Make all the with chicken exactly right. I'm like, oh, here, so here's a bag of bones, Amber. <laughs> okay, anything else on challenges? Because Haley from the Art Garage just asked a question, which is also a question I had on my list. So I love a little synchronicity. Okay, no more challenges? <laughs> but I will say for social media, it is hard to be like, Look, I'm the best at this. It really is. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would challenge you to try it. So I'd like, be like, I killed this today. Look at this. <laughs> I'm feeling so good about this right now. <laughs> we'll all cheer you on. <laughs> I posted, I'll try too. <laughs> yeah. I'm working on a pair of chickens right now at my house. That's fun. Thank you. Yeah. See? Post that and be like, look what I made. Isn't it amazing? We'll all support you. <laughs> Okay, so Haley asks, what are your goals for the upcoming year following your time in residency? Which I have a bullet point that says, what's next for you? So I think Haley worded that much nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got goals? Who's got ideas? Who's got plans? Oh, ideally, I have a whole studio in my head set up exactly how I want it. Also, where I don't have to deal with the people, someone else does that for me. <laughs> but uh, realistically, just I would like to kind of follow in Christine's footsteps and branch out more and do more shows and kind of have my summers yeah. scheduled nights and booked up. And I want to do more shows in Florida with my brothers. Awesome. So, you did that this year for the first time? Uh, yeah, August I went down there. That was awesome. so was that, that long ago? <laughs> <laughs> like yesterday we were talking about that. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, we don't for sure. so I want to do more of those next year. That's so, a great way to reach a different audience that you yeah, wouldn't normally be able that's to a access. Good market down there too. I follow a lot of artists yeah. that like all winter they just travel around the state of Florida. Right in the pan that's my dream, like the Destin mm -hmm. area. It's beautiful down there. Yeah. So that's my, my goal for the next year. I think that's a great goal and a good achievable one. Like you can make progress towards that yeah. without like diving Killing off myself. the deep end. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <I'm dry. laughs> yeah. Absolutely. What about the rest of you? I'd say mine's similar. I want to just keep doing the shows, keep pushing myself to do the bigger shows, and uh, maybe expand to a double booth if I have a good summer. Yeah, I'd like to do that. But uh, yeah, if I can get out to Colorado, down to Florida, uh, we'll see. We'll see how this year goes before I plan next year. For sure. You've got a lot of busy weekends coming <laughs> up. You know. I'm not going to have a day off for a couple months. Yeah. <laughs> and we also have talked about this as artists and like, so those of you watching, if you go to artist events, please be nice to the artist. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that because when you set up in the morning and then you sit there all day long and you have to deal with customers on top of being the person who made the stuff, that's such a hard like emotional connection. You're not just talking to like the 
sales clerk at Target, right? You're talking to the person who like poured their soul into that piece of artwork. And so sometimes you see customers just like rude. That's hard. Yeah. I've had people knock my mugs because they're not wheel thrown. So they're all, some of them are a little wonky. And I had one person say, well, these don't look professional. And I was like, oh, that hurts. He's right over there. Like maybe I'm not your style. I was like, I don't know. They're more organic. But I've had that. Well, this is this just stuff is too weird for our house. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We should start recording those comments. Right? They're kind of funny. <laughs> See, you look at your marketing. Exactly. Oh, I, <laughs> well, I wanted to say, well, go buy flowers, right? <laughs> right. The flower painting was right across from me. Exactly. Just go find a landscape or something. No. No. <laughs> you know, it's the thing, right? You do kind of find your people. You mm-hmm. find the people who love what you do. Yeah, there is somebody out there. Find your vocals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about since we're going in order? Yeah, why not? Um, so after our group show, I've got our walk into pier. Uh, I'll be at after, which is a new bar. My artwork's already hanging inside there. So if you go, they're open Fridays and Saturdays from seven to one or something like that. Um, it's a cool place. And so I got my work there. Got my solo show in August, September range. Uh, and then I will be at Kavarna this fall, uh, I believe August through December. And then I am going to be co curating a show with um, Shana of Studio Rouge for the September art night when that returns. So continue to do all the concrete. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to keep chugging forward. Yeah, doing all the things. And awesome. Things. Yeah. Cool. That's what's awesome. next. Nice. I'm a little more organic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping Everybody's in a different place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm hoping to continue just kind of honing my craft, maybe um, narrowing down the studios that I'd like to work in. Um, just to sort of see myself as an artist. I, prior to this, I've done a lot of commission work or work for gifts. And it's just been a challenge to think for myself, what do I want to make for me without parameters around it? And I think I'm carving that out. Um, so just kind of continuing to discover that. And then the piece about where or how do I want to be selling my things? I'm not entirely sure. I've attended a couple of markets. I think I would like to almost job shadow someone doing one. <laughs> I'm in Door County next weekend. Cool. Um, all the out of that. At, at first, I thought, I don't know about that, but after attending a couple and just watching and going to them myself, um, I know it's a ton of work, but also it seems like a cool, fun day. You meet so network. many people. I just, I love it. Yeah. It's great. Have, uh, I'm going to Rhubarb Fest with Jennifer Frisch in June. You want to tag along? Oh, nice. More than welcome. Even just making friends with people that you do markets with and selling next to each other. That yeah. just really sounds lovely. Oh. And then it felt a little easier than having to figure out how to ship all of your artwork. And yeah. I really thought about that. Inventory too. I have to work on inventory. <laughs> I, I highly recommend the job shadowing kind of thing, and that's yeah. why I brought like Kim in to do artist journey that last month already to talk about her doing art markets all over the place. Because my cautionary tale is that I did one. I will never do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt I like dove off the deep end, end and I was too. like, oh. the first couple I did was very overwhelming. Yeah, I was scared and in the corner, and I didn't want to talk to anybody and stuff, and. Then I was at Art Street last year and I had that like, I was doing well, talking to everybody and I had this like overwhelming moment where I just needed a mental check out and I should have left the booth, but my mom was there and she was terrified to be alone. So I just kind of hid in the back. Then somebody called me out on it, a customer, for not greeting them in the booth. Oh. And I just about snacked myself. Yeah, I felt so bad, you know, and then I started chatting with their stuff and 
and it was fine. So now I'll just whenever I need to leave the booth, whenever I need that mental break, you have to leave. You got to find a booth sitter or, you know, yeah. go in the booth or out just out front so people don't realize you're the artist when you're. <laughs> I just like pushed through it for the whole day and I had yeah. great sales and there's so this many was, people and it was, was day three and I'm just yeah. like, I would have never survived. Yeah. Yep. I made it through one day and I, took I was glad she called me out on it because yeah. it made me aware of it. And then for I was sure. like, yeah, that was really awkward. That is kind of yeah, my golden so. rule. It's like, if you're doing a market, you at least have to say, Yes. Yeah. If you ignore the people who walk into your booth, you probably shouldn't be doing marketing. Yeah. Probably not the bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last but not least, um, a couple of my goals after this, uh, I want to update my uh, my portfolio, my business, uh, and continue uh, selling, taking commissions, and then also wanting to just be a part of. Um, art shows, art galleries, uh, whether that's anywhere local or out of state. <laughs> we should mention um, the Trout's Commission Show that you're a part of. Oh, yes. Um, so I'm a part of the, um, uh, it was like the Call for Art um, for the Trout Museum in Appleton. Um, and they work with local artists uh, to connect artists with um, clients who are interested in buying art and um, so they're kind of like the middleman to helping us all get connected. Um, so that's been a really great and connection. They do, a, they do a show with the commission pieces? Um, yes. Yep. yep. And then they do a show um, and that's also coming up I believe in July. Okay, sometime this summer. Yeah. Sometime it's all on the Trout's summer, website. So. So. Yeah, so that's big news. That's a, that's a cool mm -hmm. thing to have landed for sure. Yeah, so super excited for that. Well, we are at 6.29, which is crazy to me. I feel like I just looked down and it was like, oh. so, <laughs> um, that went by fast. If any of you have anything else you'd like to share, please go for it. Um, I think we've covered everything I really wanted to make sure. And I've definitely talked enough. So. <laughs> I'll let you guys close it out if there's anything else you'd like to say. Come join us on June 2nd. Yeah. yeah. From yeah. five to seven for the opening yeah. reception at the art garage. <laughs> yes. Uh, we will all have artwork on display. It'll be very fun. Um, it'll be cool to see the pieces. I, I've seen bits and pieces, all right, like glimpses. So I'm excited to see it all come together. Um, and that'll be up the month of June. So as I say, June 2nd to July 1st. Okay. With that, I'm going to click close. Goodbye, Haley. Thanks for joining us.